meaning, there's no journey, you're not going anywhere, it's all chance, it's all coincidence, there's no goal, there's no purpose, forget about it. It contemptuously threw God's covenant up into the air. And Moshe teaches us that everything does have purpose. That this idea that there is no meaning and no purpose has to be wiped out because it makes life completely futile. <coughs> it takes all the meaning and all the joy out of life. It takes away from us the ability to deal with the hard things. Until we know that everything has meaning and purpose and everything is sent only by God. A philosophy of chance is a philosophy of futility. Asher korecho baderet, a malik attacked with mikre, with chance, with haphazard, meaningless events, meaningless noise. And David comes to heal this by teaching us that everything has meaning, that everything is song. Everything has its own song. It can be a very plaintive song. It can be a very sad song. It's a song. And David turns every level of our experience into song that has meaning, that has connection, that you can move from song to song. And here is David Amelech's secret, which is all contained in the national treasure of our people, the five books of the Tehillim, <coughs> which correspond to the five books of the Torah. Just as Moses gave to Israel the five books of the Torah, so David Amelech has given us the five books of the Tehillim. And this immortal, this precious work is really, has been for thousands of years, and until today is the secret treasury of healing for Israel for all time, as relevant and as meaningful today as it was when David Amelech first, through Holy Spirit, brought these songs into the world. The very first word of the Tehillim is the very opposite of depression. Ashrei ho'ish, asher lo Happy is the man that has not gone according to the counsel of the wicked. Dabur Melech, what about the repair for the very first sin of man, Adam Chava? The sin was that they fell for the Atat Arashaim. They fell for the counsel of the serpent. And their fall was the beginning of the whole fall of humanity. And David was with Moshe, the one who came to rectify this. And that is why the name of Adam alludes to both David and Moshe. The second letter of Adam is David, and the third letter is Mem Moshe. And David comes to provide us with the pathway that is the opposite of the Atat Rishaim. The opposite is to go in the way of the Torah, Ki Imbatorat Hashem Chepzo. Happy is the man whose desire is in the Torah of Hashem and in whose Torah he meditates day and night. I'd like to draw to a conclusion to this part of tonight's presentation by drawing attention to a pathway of healing from depression which is contained within David's Tehillim and which it took until Rabbi Nachman of Breslev 200 years ago to bring to the surface and to reveal to us. And it's so important that I've named my institute in Yerushalayim which is devoted to the spread of Torah in the languages and media of our day I've called it by the name by which this teaching of Rav Nachman drawing out what is contained within the Tehillim In Psalm 38 Dr. Melech makes a surprising statement We are certainly today, I'm sorry I made an error, but uh, we get the psalm reference correct. It's psalm 37, and though it opens the psalm by telling us you see that things are so bad around the world and you know that there are some people who uh, 
are doing uh, apparently enormously well while everybody else is suffering. And he says, don't be jealous of these people. Don't be jealous of the people who do crimes, for they will quickly waste away like the grass, and they shall uh, dry up like the vegetables. He tells us, trust in Hashem and do good. Dwell in the land and feed off Emunah. And he makes a very surprising statement after saying this, that don't be jealous of the wicked. He says, don't even worry about it, because in just a little, the wicked won't be there. You look at the place where they apparently were, and he's not there anymore. And David seems to be saying that the wicked will simply pass away, they will simply evaporate, simply disappear into thin air. Odma'at, just a little, the end of Asha, the wicked man will not be there. It will not come of Eneno, if you will contemplate his place, he's not there. He won't be there anymore. But Nachman shows us how surprising King David's statement here is. He says that King David is teaching us that even if somebody rejects himself, rejects herself completely, and feels that he or she is a complete rasha, a complete mirasha, they've lost everything, they've fallen into uh, the worst things, they've deviated from the Torah, they're the opposite of the Torah. He says, Ogma'at, just a little bit still there. Ma'at, just a bit, odd still, just a bit. Even this person who is a rasha, you can only find the odd ma'at, that little bit of good that is still there. The inner rasha, the rasha will not be there. There is a way of redemption. Sometimes from the apparently strict voice of the Torah, you think there's no redemption. If a person has sinned, they've sinned, they're on God's uh, uh, bad list forever. And David says, no. Odd ma'at, if you just find the redeeming feature. Amidst all that darkness and this evil person, the Rasha will not be there. If you look, you contemplate where he was, he's not there anymore. <coughs> but Nachman tells us that we can discover what is this Od Me'at and the power of this Od Me'at, this little bit, from another verse in Tehillim. Another verse in David's Tehillim, which uses the same expression. I will sing to my God with my odd. This verse appears in our prayers. We recite it every morning in Psalm 146. I shall sing to Hashem with my odd. What is my odd? My might, my power. Where does this power, this might come from? It comes from the little bit of good that is still in me, that odd ma'at. A little bit in virtue of which I'm not a rasha, that I can redeem myself, look at myself positively. But Nathan points out what is the meaning of this Odma'at, that there's not a single one of us who's never done anything good in our, all of our lives. Everyone has done something good. Everyone has some connection with the Torah. Everyone has done some mitzvah. Everyone has given something at one time. They had a feeling of compassion for somebody who was in need. They gave them something, they gave them their very uh, energy, they helped them, they did something, a favor, a goodness. There's nobody who doesn't have that feeling of compassion. If you can only find your way to that, that's the way to redemption. This was the way David cured Saul. He said, okay, so you've fallen, that's terrible, you're the first king of Israel, this is awful, but there's a way to find redemption. There is some good that remains in you. There's so much good in you, if you focus on the good, that will dispel all of the ruach ra'ah. It took Rabbi Nachman of Breslov to reveal that this cure for depression is contained within the Tehillim of David Amelech. This is not a new teaching, it's not a teaching of Hasidut, it's a teaching of the Tehillim. And I would like to conclude by recommending to everybody in what is seen widely perceived in the media and perceived in, uh, uh, by everybody that I've been speaking to in my present visit to New York, the cure for the depression that is uh, now engulfing the world, apparently, where even the even the uh, the economic situation is being described as a depression, where a word that has its place in uh, psychology is used to describe the economy.